Okay. That's a, should that be the start of the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're in here. You're we, here too. We did it again. We're uh, never welcome not. Welcome back. All right. You know what I was thinking about? That was uh, just as I was uh, getting my packages from downstairs. What's that? Um, and this is this is just a congratulatory thing for people who listen. I was saying just like as, with our own personal content on our channels, mm-hmm. it's like kind of just us created. But the podcast relies a lot on the viewer. Like they're a part of the show so much. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, oh, there's questions and mail. Like. A good deal of the content is not us at all. (laughs) Thank you. This podcast is made possible by viewers like you. Yeah. Thank you. Also, we uh, should we can't forget to record a sponsorship at the end of this. Okay, I will. But you'll remind me, and we'll be okay. We both forgot every time. (laughs) If you if you see the sponsorship later in this episode or hear it, and it's me on my iPhone later, we forgot. That's (laughs) it. So you know. Whatever. We get to see. I don't even know what the answer is. Yeah. This, Who knows, dude? I'm a viewer in a sense. I don't know what's going to happen. Technically, you're, we're all viewers of, of everything. If, you, if, you, if you're using your eyes. <laughs> Good. Thanks, <laughs> man. I really said something. Every time. Here's a, here's a shower thought. Every time we record the podcast, we each watch half of the podcast. Whoa. Wait. <laughs> Oh, because I'm watching just you. Yeah, and I'm just watching your part. Well, technically, because we're not watching through the cameras. We're getting an exclusive look that nobody else sees. This is the Patreon first look. Yeah, technically, there are four camera angles to the podcast, and the viewers only get to see two. Dang, Wait, dude. eight. Whoa. Because of our eyes. Let's watch those Google Glass. Uh, let's get those Google Glass cams dude, for an episode. Do you remember the uproar that Google Glasses fucking caused, where immediately when they announced it, they were like, you can drive and the gps will be like up in the corner of your eye uh-huh. and everyone was like no no you can't put a screen up like in the corner yeah oh man I, dude i knew somebody who uh who was so convinced they were like the way of the future it was when we were in high school and it was this guy uh, i won't say his last name mm-hmm. but robert you know who you are <laughs> <laughs> and he uh he was like convinced he's like these are going to be the biggest thing like you should put money into google stock because like these smartphones are dead yeah it's like oh my god nobody no i love it feels like every like few years somebody comes around it's like smartphones are dead here's the new thing (laughs) i think people were doing that for like the uh for like the alexa and shit like yeah and uh apple watches too yeah or or any of the smart watches which smart watches a lot of people especially for exercise and they'll get a lot of use out of it Mm -hmm. for me now that I'm older, any pitch of wearable tech, I'm like, no thanks. Yeah. We kind of figured out clothes for the most part, <laughs> and I don't need it to like have Wi-Fi. I don't need my boxers to have Wi-Fi. I don't know. You never know. <laughs> I don't even wear. I wear boxer briefs now. I do too. Except today, I ran out of clean undies, so I'm wearing an old pair of boxers. <laughs> do you remember that immediate switch where, like, we were younger? And just regular um, briefs were the style. Mm -hmm. You'd have Spider-Man briefs. I had Butt Ugly Martian underwear as well, if you remember that show at all. Yeah. It was one of the most horrifying looking shows of all time. Grotesque. Um, But, I mean, it's in the name. So, uh, (laughs) but, like, it was an instant. I think I was in, like, third grade. And it was just, like, if you wear briefs, you're a loser and boxers are cool. Damn. And it was just, like, what the fuck? Also, who would know? You know, yeah. and I, I kept wearing briefs for about two years after that. Stayed strong. I remember. Do you ever have a lucky piece of clothing at all? Uh, well, I actually, I, I really liked wearing my Spider-Man underwear. I yeah. felt like I could run faster in it, but that was when I was younger. I had a, I had a pair I called uh, my lucky polar bear boxers. <laughs> <laughs> they were just, uh, they were just like a black pair of boxers with little white polar bears on them. And it really got to the point where I noticed every time something really cool happened, I had my lucky polar bear boxers on. So I'd wear them to everything, big basketball games like a school play stuff like that so you start wearing it to everything good yes but then better things started happening yeah i got exponentially better and better (laughs) so i'm between lucky polar bear boxers because i had two iterations of them and i've just i've been on such a hot streak baby it's like i'm off the meds i don't even need them sorry hold on you know what i mean when they give you medication for a while and then maybe you're taking sugar pills and it's like it's just the placebo now so it's just the momentum going i don't have boxers now but i still have the boxers in my heart are you not taking medication that you were 
prescribed for? Let's not muddy the waters We're here. We're talking about boxers here. Let's <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing, too, I, I think I told you for lucky clothing is I was so fucking dumb. It, well, I was in preschool, so it's all right. But uh, they sold the Hot Wheels shoes, mm -hmm. and uh, they put a little uh, speedometer on the heel, but it wasn't a real speedometer. The needle would just move. So I would run really fast, and I would stop, and I'd look at my shoe, and the needle was already moving back to zero. Ooh. And I was like, I can never look at these fast enough, but I know they're tracking my speed. Mm -hmm. Thing is, they weren't. Damn. I was a fucking moron. Had you known, dude. Hot Had Wheels, I am opening a lawsuit against you. <laughs> Beat that. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, what's good. a dumb little tech flair thing that you really loved and you kind of miss? Because when I was a kid, I got so stoked for those little like, what uh, hit clips? You remember hit clips? At oh all? yeah, I forgot about those. Blew my mind yeah. in elementary school. It was the one where it was the little like almost DS cartridges with songs on them, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's like, dude. You could and I'm like, you could put this tiny tiny hunk of plastic in, and you tell me I can listen to the first half of Aaron Carter's "I Want Candy." I was just gonna say my sister had the "I Want Candy." Oh, everybody did. Everybody. That was the hit clip. That that was the hit hit clip. It was that one, and then it was like a couple Britney Spears tracks yeah. too. Like yeah, yeah. I don't think it was "Piece of Me" yet. It was like, uh, God, what other Britney Spears songs are there? Uh, I wasn't toxic for it because I think "Toxic" is a little too sexual for yeah. hit clips. But I think it's "Oops, I Did It Again." Yeah, that was probably it. Oh, by the way, uh, we are in Los Angeles, and from time to time we go to the Grove. It's a pretty place. There is a if you if you're familiar with the area, there is an enormous store across from the Grove that is opened up a month ago. And it's just a Britney Spears like museum right now. Okay, so I thought it was like an ad that they had painted over. It's an actual building that's dedicated like to yeah, it okay. for now because it used to be like a like a Kmart or something. Yeah, and then it was empty, and then suddenly it was like a week later or something. We just walked down the street, and it's called like the Zone, Britney Spears, the Zone. And I biked past it like a couple nights ago, and I looked in there, and it's like part store but also part like activation like brand thing okay because there's signs out front that say like if you step into the store you consent even if you you might not be aware of it you consent to being filmed and recorded blah 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 and there were like really weird people like when i mean weird i mean look like sci-fi looking guys with ipads that look like they are clearly on camera doing some sort of part thing mm -hmm. and then they're also selling a bunch of like britney spears merch in there weird so i'm like why what the hell is this yeah i don't it, know and i told you when we were talking about it before it does doesn't, I, I'm not educated enough, but I'm pretty sure Brittany doesn't have uh, control over her own life. Like, she's not her own legal guardian. Yeah, there's this huge, like, unironic save Brittany thing going around right now. Yeah. Uh, I think it was during, like, her very public meltdown where she shaved her head and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, somebody granted, like, I, I power forgot what of attorney. Name, yeah, it's... it's I feel like we're going to fall down a rabbit hole here, and I'm not Brittany. educated enough to talk about it. How old is Brittany Spears? 38? What?! How is she 38? I, in my head, I'm just like, she's probably like 32. Mm, Holy uh, shit. I mean, yeah, she was... I, I think about how young we were when she was super famous. There was a time, dude, where at least to kid me, she was like the most famous person in the world at yeah. the time, other than like presidents. That's so weird. And now it's like... I don't. I don't ever hear people really talk about Britney Spears, but she's she still... has a residency in Vegas, I think. So yeah. she's like, she's fucking killing it. But yeah, I know mm -hmm. what you mean. I, they, she still has her stands, but as far as pop culture goes, Britney is not super in it. Yeah. But more than you'd expect. Like she hasn't fully fallen off. I think I checked, and it's like she has something like thirteen or fifteen million monthly listeners on there Spotify. You go. She's she's still crushing it. Then I wonder how. I, Never mind. I was just going to ask more about her legal stuff. I was like, is she making a lot of money still? I just don't even know. I'm, it's it's fascinating, but I wouldn't even begin to know where to look about it. I would recommend you guys look into it and educate yourselves. So because honestly, it, I when I I think I looked into it maybe like a year ago, and now I've forgotten it. There's a certain amount of info that I can keep about Britney Spears in my head. And mm. <laughs> yeah, I hit my cap. <laughs> my RAM is, is maxed out on the yeah. Britney Spears front. I would recommend that you guys look into it and then tell me so I don't have to look into it, please. Well, now you're just going to get a bunch of tweets saying the same thing for a while. I changed my mind. I don't need to know, please. Thank you. <laughs> um, oh, dude, we should probably tell the boys back home. Last last week, I think we were we were ranting about how we were fell in love with the game Mord How. It's mm -hmm. pretty chill. Dude, we've been out on the raft these days, boys. Yeah, Mordhau's great. There's uh, this game called Raft that's pretty much, I think Donovan, uh, Crypt Daddy, put it best where he said, I think you explained it, or, or maybe Tyler did, and he said, so it's like Minecraft and Sea of Thieves. And it was like, yep, mm -hmm. you got it. You're just on a raft, and you, you're just real 
scraps in and then you build your raft to be bigger yeah I, we played till like nearly four in the morning Dude, I think tyler so was up till seven yeah last night. and gus is the worst influence on his friend tyler ever because tyler will go like i need to go to sleep and gus will be like hey man it's already morning you can't <laughs> you can't go to bed now here's what i love too is is i tyler is my buddy from college uh tyler i spent three full years with him and where he was that guy yeah like, come on we're drinking tonight and then and then he would do it for the most severe shit like you're drinking half a bottle of tequila right now <laughs> Tyler, okay, you know. Yeah. And now I'm just saying, Tyler, stay up late a little bit. And he goes, no, That's why are thing. you doing this? He stays on every time and he follows it. Like, you, I, I, the first time I heard it recently is we were playing Ward Howe, and then he was like, uh, whatever amount of, like, he wanted to kind of, he was, he, the thing is, Tyler will float out like, Oh, I shouldn't get another drink, knowing that you're like the <laughs> devil being like, Tyler, <laughs> get another drink. It's like he wants me to tell him to get yeah, another drink. Yeah, that's why exactly. he says it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, um, it's been chill, dude. I'm loving those game nights. I, I was even telling people, I think a few months ago, I had a hard time sinking back into video games and stuff. But, dude, last couple of weeks, so I've been playing with, with the boys on Steam and stuff. I'm in love again. It's fun as fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, also, I forgot to mention, uh, again. Oh, wait. Business, 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 business. business. Last thing again, just I'm not going to win the Shorty Awards. They narrow down the nominations, I believe, and so of who gets invited to go. I want to take Jakey as my date. I will not win, but if you want to vote for me, the link's in the description. A lot of people, I was shocked with the amount of people who were tweeting the link at me. Like, I voted, Mm -hmm. and it, uh, I'll just say, I was very, my heart was warmed, and that's it. Yeah. So uh, that's all for a bit. Would you but, any wait, well, we had a, we just have a grab bag of stuff that we did together. First what? of all, Eddie, oh, we yeah. were on the Super Mega Podcast. Yes. Go check that out. The boys are going to come on our podcast real soon. Uh, I was on a conversation with, with Philip DeFranco. Eddie is on, too. You can watch both of us up there. Uh, both Not e- that episode. That was, yes. Yeah, before, yeah, yeah, okay. Separate ones. Uh, Eddie and I are going to be on the H3 podcast, I believe, the first Friday in February. Is that correct? Yeah, that, I think so. <laughs> that should be it. The first Friday in February, both Eddie and I are going to be on there. Some good fellas. Also, individually, I did a podcast with Ryan Leader and Sir Spence, and I did one with Charlie Barrons. You just hit five podcasts, I think. <laughs> I, this is my Oh, and I did the Vsauce 2 podcast. <laughs> uh, this is my podcast sweep right now. Also, uh, there's lots of videos with with Churdleys and Trevor coming out right now. So just there's a lot of shit. We're we're just yep. we're with a lot of boys right now. Also, I filmed a new video. I'm working on it. I'm not going to put a deadline out because I'm awful with those, but I'm really happy with this one. So uh, turn on no, – no, do people have to turn on notifications still? Do those, I think so. Those you, work? you got to ring the dang bell. You don't need to turn on notifications for my video. I don't care. Watch it. I would love that, but I don't care if you're immediate. I don't want to annoy you and your phone. But if you want that, go for it. Do it. Also, uh, if you haven't seen uh, the latest in Bamba Jones, I had so much fun doing it. Please go watch it. I know it didn't reach as many people as it usually does. January, bro. It's just the January slump. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. And thanks for making uh, – I've been seeing such fun memes of, about it. And, and so thank you for engaging with it. I just like the in Bamba stuff so much. So, so business, 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 business. Yeah, just for people curious, like January for uh, online business stuff or just like uploading – it's just like a dead zone. It's yeah. the worst time of the year. Just people aren't watching videos as much in January. So yeah. thanks for, if you're listening, you're keeping us afloat, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I, I, again, I, I hate that I continually forget every year Yeah. where you go and you're like, what's happening? We're like, it, this happens every year, January, sometimes a little bit into February. It gets a little fucky, but then it'll write its course. So. And I think, yeah, that's the worst thing is because December, November to December are the best of the year. Yeah. So you go from the full high peak to the lowest low. And I think the big trick is that the first week of January is still good from like winter break for people and everything. And so it's like you get into January, like it's good this year for January. Yeah. And then you pass it and it's not. No. You get duped. We're still I- enjoying our everything. So we're not like bitching about it. We're just letting you guys know. Just I figured you'd be yeah. interested. Just an awareness of what's up in case you didn't miss it. I know a lot We'd of like people. We like to spread awareness. We do. We do, honestly. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> I don't even care what we spread awareness for. Just I just want people to be filled in, all right? <laughs> That's just like the mo- the most horrible movements that I've started. <laughs> just, I just like spreading awareness. Oh. <laughs> I just want people to be aware. You know, Armenian genocide. Now you know. Oh, well, that, making them aware that it happened? Yeah. 
That's good for that, education. It's good that they know that it happened so they can research it because I don't have any further information to share. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should not have mentioned it. <laughs> what are you going to do? Hey, man. Let's get into some preguntas and get all far away from that. <laughs> Open in some freaking preguntas for our English speakers. That's questions. That's questions. Open your Duolingo app, please. Took me about a year to catch on. That's okay. It happens to all of us. Uh, ask us your questions. Follow us on Twitter at Eddie Burback and at Gus Buckets. Uh, also, oh. Somebody, whoever took the fucking Gus Johnson name on Byte. I don't know if I'm going to do Byte yet, but I still want it. You, you dipshit. Yep, same fuck thing, you. Same thing happened for my name. I just have Burback now. I'm probably not going to make a Byte. Do not follow me on there. But I might. I wanted to make sure. Well, you know what happened with TikTok? And What's I up? mentioned this before. Is I have a, 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 a video clip that is a joke that I made when I was like 19. And it's I still stand by the joke. It's a funny joke mm-hmm. where there was the don't judge me challenge. I mentioned this on the podcast before, I think. I think so. Where it's like it would be all these fuckboy like Instagram dudes who would make themselves look like nerds and then they cover the camera and then they pull away and they would look hot. And oh my God, they were nerds before. Mm-hmm. So I did that. And when I pulled away, it was like, oh my God, I'm dressed as Hitler. Holy shit. That is aged visually a little bit more of a yikes. The joke itself, I still stand by. Somebody on TikTok took my name and just posted that one old deep cut clip. And it's like, you just trying to cancel me? Like, yeah. what was the point of this? Why would you post that one old clip that some people might get mad about? It's so, I, I can't. I can't get in the mindset of people that just do that kind of stuff like that because yeah. it it I that is to me one of the most pathetic things you could do is to just go out of your way to try to like affect somebody's public image like that. Yeah, it's, it's so stupid and and it's like I don't know why people do it. And then the irony is sometimes you you don't want to talk about it because it's like some people have that sick sense of like oh yeah I got it they noticed yep. me I affected them in some way. And it's what a pathetic existence. Just don't do that. Like you have something of value to offer the world. Do your own stuff. Don't take pot shots. Other people fuck off. Yeah. Well, that's what I think especially pissed me off about it is I still stand by the joke, but I was like, ah, visually, I I don't know. I just don't want this out there anymore. So I deleted off my Instagram. Again, everything's permanent on the internet, but I like took it off everything. And so this person had downloaded it and been like, I'm gonna bring (laughs) it back. And then somebody tweeted at me once and I explained it and everyone was cool with it. Thank you guys for being rational people when I ex- describe these things. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It was just annoying because it's like everyone else was like, yeah, no, this is fine. But that one person seemed like, I'm going to get him. And yeah. it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's dumb. It's so dumb. I, I'd like to think that that stuff is going to probably start going away in the next couple of years. That just gotcha shit. But yeah, who you knows? never know. Things always recalibrate. Who knows? Yeah. Anyway, for our wholesome group of folks, uh, our Twitter pregunt is here. Let's take a look here. At milk underscore private says, disagreement. My friend says that if you do not play an instrument or study music, you are not allowed to criticize music. I say that anyone <laughs> is allowed to criticize music. Yeah, you're right, dude. That's what? Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> like what? It's just because I go down to like Burger King and have a bad burger, I can't criticize it because I'm not Gordon freaking Ramsay over here. Also, no. it's like if you hear a guitar solo and you're that, like, that's really good. And I go, you nope. You played the trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> you can only talk about trumpets. Stay in your lane. <laughs> This guy thinks he could talk about guitars. I like it because I feel like half the questions are, are either people that don't that go in so hard and they don't realize that they're probably wrong yeah. in this one, or th- they're they're people that just have really frustrating friend opinions. I get it though because they want they they want to show the clip of us to their friends being like, "The fuck is wrong with you?" Yeah. And I understand. I'm so happy that we can do that for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy when you're showing this to your friend. To tell him to look directly at me right now. What are you thinking, man? And that's it. That's all he needed. That's it. I just saved him. Dude, you saved his life and your friendship. Honestly. I'm pretty uh, pretty generous with my time and my thoughts and my body. <laughs> <laughs> you can each have some. <laughs> um, all right. Liam52906056 says, hey, do you think that there will ever be another unifying mobile game that everyone has? Or was it a one-time thing like Pokemon Go? It's a good one, though. I don't think... I, I wish Pokemon Go could happen again, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't even 
do it again probably i don't think i would i was at the perfect place in my life for it to hit same here yeah yeah. yours is cooler than mine oh, but mine yeah. was really good still but go ahead and explain to the boys it, it couldn't have been a better deal it was the uh beginning of uh, i think it was my junior year of college and it was the very very beginning of the summer and i was back in my my college town i was in menominee wisconsin just kind of smaller central wisconsin uh, a college town and the start of the summer i got my very first and only for a long time brand deal uh, and it was this live streaming company, and I think they paid me like three thousand dollars to live stream every day for a month or something like that. And I had never seen anything like that. And as a result, I didn't need to get a job over the summer. And Pokemon Go dropped in a college town. There you go. And it was just me and my buddy Tyler and some of our scattered college friends that stayed back for the summer. And every day I would wake up. Tyler and I would walk. Every day we were averaging walking 10 miles a day Jesus. playing to Pokemon Go because we play for like 10 or 12 hours. Yeah. I spent so much just a little chump change on like extra Pokeballs. We'd walk around all the Poke Stops and we just played that thing into the ground. And at night we'd go get some Rolling Rock, some Evan Williams whiskey, and we'd go just sing sad songs in front of my live stream obligation camera for an hour. It was great. I had so much fun. It's fucking awesome. And it was so positive because you're walking around campus and you'd be out at midnight and it felt so safe because you're walking around and you know that like 90% of the people you're seeing are playing Pokemon Go. Yeah. So you just walk up to them like, yo, there's a rat tat over there. Go get it. Whoa, yeah. so cool. It's we, anyway, it was chill. We need Pokemon Go to make the streets safer. Yeah. Because <laughs> then there's eyes everywhere of friendly Pokemon players. Mm -hmm. so, and then they can uh, they can sick a Charizard on anybody with with bad intentions. Go get him. And he breathes fire. He burns them alive. That's not real. He goes, rah. That's kind of what it would be like. Just like that? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. You know what always bothered me? Uh, a little dumb thing is is that kid when you're growing up and you're telling a story. And maybe I'm telling you a story like that. And I say, oh, he goes, rah. You make a sound effect. And they go, wait. How did that go again? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Any little thing. I just, yeah. Any, any of that small friend bullying stuff where you're like, all right. Yeah. All right, guy. I'm just trying to have some fun. That's why I love that Key and Peele sketch that, that dissects. Uh, it's when Jordan is the, mm. <laughs> you believe this guy? Yeah. <laughs> I love it when he Awkward. grabs his face too. <laughs> yeah. It's so satisfying. Have one opinion. Anyway, Dummy Thick Lord 1 says, <laughs> uh, do batteries belong in the freezer or the drawer? Are you going to make me... How many fucking things do I need to put in the freezer, okay? Wait. Oh, wait, wouldn't a battery blow up? I'm putting it in the freezer this next <laughs> Please week. Please don't do that. Guys, leave your comments below. Should Eddie let me put batteries in the freezer? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're fine in the freezer, right? Do they, like, hold the charge longer or are they just trying to make us look dumb? I have heard that kind of old wives tale but i've heard that it was the fridge that you put them in the fridge to make them last longer to me the freezer seems like how does that not blow up i just usually keep them in my mouth <laughs> <laughs> they ever blow me. up in there <laughs> no man they taste really metallic -y, though <laughs> Do batteries blow up in the freezer? Uh, the very top ex uh, answer here says, a frozen battery can explode with considerable force, Whoa. spraying acid and shrapnel quite a distance. The explosion is caused by the expansion of the gas from charging. The gas is trapped by ice and unable to vent. The battery case may also be weakened by the expansion of the ice. So here's the question. What does he mean by better? Because a battery is undoubtedly, from what we heard, cooler in the freezer. Yes. But it, it's more usable in the drawer. So is it better to be cool or useful? I don't know. Either way, I think what you're telling me is you're letting me put some batteries in the freezer. This is not what I'm saying to you. Eddie, we could have cool explosions and shrapnel in our Jack's pizzas what if you'd I'm, let me. What I'm saying to you is that we should put batteries in other people's freezers. So then we can test the experiment, and it's cool, and we can have our Jack's pizza battery acid free. I like that. Can I, can I put one more cherry on top? Sure. Battery in somebody else's freezer inside of an egg. Then it'll double blow up. Double blow up. Or it's it'll implode. <laughs> <laughs> just an egg yolk like in the universe <laughs> just sucking everything in. We, we create a dependable uh, additional uh, power source to like nuclear power. <laughs> That's how uh, sleep paralysis Hank gets created. <laughs> That's his origin story. He goes, Marie, did you put a battery in this egg? <laughs> She's like, yes. Okay, hold on. In our freezer or someone else's? Before I go check the freezer, get my minerals. <laughs> Okay, today's episode is sponsored by Mac Weldon. Yay! <laughs> nice, dude. That's really good. Thank you. Uh, Mac Weldon believes in smart design, uh, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. 
Uh, I shopped. It says talk about your experience, and I did have the experience. I've actually worn Mack Weldon underwear for years now. Um, I did it for a sponsorship back in like 2017, I think, and I've been wearing Mack Weldon ev- underwear ever since. Uh, it's real easy to shop. They're fucking quality pieces of not only underwear, but joggers. Whoa! I like their joggers a lot. Um, they're just really good quality. Um they have a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial. Gus, do you know what the fuck that means? We're, if you got a microbe, we ain't having it. Yeah, and also it means it eliminates odor. Oh. Um, they want you to be comfortable, so if you don't like your first pair of underwear, you can keep it, and they'll still refund you, no questions asked. I, It's my favorite pair of, like, all my underwear is Mack Weldon, actually. Um, okay, so what you guys need to do right now is... Uh, you need to, for 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com and enter promo code Gus and Eddie. Um, so if you want to get some uh, good premium underwear for 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com and enter promo code, pr- promo code, <laughs> uh, promo code Gus and Eddie. Um, and, and that's it. So enjoy the rest of the podcast. Love you. Love you. Look at I made. Wow, buddy. That's so good. You can't play with that. I was going to shake your hand. Thanks. All right, at Real Slim nine eight seven says, "Hey boys, what's one thing that is extremely popular slash very well liked by most people, but you just can't stand?" My example would be Ben Stiller, but what about you guys? Oh man, I love Ben Stiller. He's had some misses for sure, but he made Tropic Thunder. He did. I can't blame him for anything. Mm-mm. Also, Night at the Museum is really good, but I do understand if you saw like uh, well, I'm a, uh, Zoolander two. I did not, but even the trailers, it was like Ben. Yeah. Benny boy. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Go home. Um, I don't know. Uh, is Ben Stiller that popular where he could? I feel like a lot of people dislike him. I think that a lot of people really hate him. Which yeah. sucks because I like Ben Stiller. Not, yeah. again, he's not like a genius, but I mean, dude, he directed Tropic Thunder. Actually, he's been a genius in a decent amount of things that he's done. And mm-hmm. then also some are a little bit, you know, poppy. You got to assume even uh, like... Th- just take like a, a popular meme. Who's the director? Michael Bay. Yeah. It's like that guy is extremely smart. He's a very good guy, and he's probably a hard fucking worker. I've heard he's not a good guy. He's probably a piece of shit guy. That's kind of what. But he's really smart, and he's a very hard worker. Uh, is the thing like even somebody that makes a bunch of Hollywood crap? It's like you do it though. You know, like yeah. that. You still have to get to that point. You know. Yeah, that's the weird thing. Uh, Michael Bay makes. It's such a weird one, too, where it's like he knows without a doubt he's very good at making movies, mm-hmm. as in like the process of, of getting everything together, having these big action shots. He's good at that for sure. And so it's like I can't be like, oh, he sucks altogether because mm-hmm. it's like I couldn't do that, dude. Yeah. At least right now I couldn't, you yeah. know. I'm not a fan of the films. but Oh, no. not. <laughs> but, a... <laughs> but I couldn't do it is the yeah. thing. Yeah, it's probably good. I just want to stress that I'm not saying he's a, a good director, but he's like – directing a movie is hard and he directs big movies yes there we go yes i Um, didn't know is he a piece of shit allegedly i've heard stories of him being kind of a piece of shit i heard and who knows how i i could be wrong on this this is i gotta go down a rabbit hole real quick of especially the internet fully turning on tj miller Mm -hmm. but it's never part of the discussion that that dude had part of his brain removed and has like a disease where he gets like super manic um but they were just like yeah fuck him he's an asshole it's like yeah but he also is you know like mentally ill and needs help and has part of his brain gone now yeah because he almost if you don't know it's like or not you but uh, uh, people listening mm-hmm. when he was filming yogi bear uh he like had some kind of dramatic like brain i think it was like a tumor and they they told him that they needed to remove it but there was like a high chance of him getting like killed um i don't know everything that's happening with like all tj news and hating him so i can't say that i like the dude but i'm saying for the trustworthiness of the story he told the story on a podcast once if i'm remembering correctly that michael bay screamed at him in front of everyone on set of transformers 4 and was like tj i hired you to be fucking funny and you're not being funny like all these people are here and fucking sucks right now and then like right after that he's like hey man you want to go get some sushi it's like that's a ma- that's maniac behavior. Wait, Michael Bay said that to yeah. him. Yeah, but also you know, again, I had to give like fifty disclaimers because b- both those people don't seem super trustworthy with story stuff. I don't know. When I was on the road doing the club stuff, uh, I heard complaints about one guy a lot from club staff, Jeremy Piven. Oh, wait, the the uh, Anuraj guy? Yeah, 
Really? I guess he tours a lot. And, I, you know, this isn't a big celebrity gossip kind of cheese may thing, but I, that is another common person that you hear is like a piece of shit. And uh, you know, this is my first time on the road, and I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but I would ask the club staff all around the country, like, who are some people that come through? What's the general vibe and stuff? And multiple times on the tour, I hear, like, Jeremy Piven came through. He was a piece of shit. He was really? he was hitting on people and really, like, like very too forward, getting really drunk. And, ugh. How can, I do... You go anywhere. How could you be mean to the staff? I just don't understand. I don't get that. This isn't a, this isn't a, a shit talking thing, but this is kind of funny. Uh, I asked who's the last guy to come through here when I did like a show in like Phoenix or somebody or something, and uh, they said that it was one of the Wayans brothers came through. Mm-hmm. I don't remember which one, but they said that in their in his rider, uh, that's like the thing. Like get this in my green room. Do this. Uh, he he asked for four full rotisserie chickens. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I mean, yeah, that's, that's all right. <laughs> is it? Did he have like a group of guys with him? And they, I don't know. Well, because aren't riders usually standard for every single club you go to, or do, do you make an individual one for each one that you go to? Typically, it's you just got your one and you okay. go around for okay, it. Okay, yeah. So hopefully that was just a specific that day thing. And what if he's eating all of them? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> he's like, yeah, did four shows this last week, sixteen rotisserie chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish I remembered which one because it would be funnier. But yeah, it's like, how, and also how if you're if you're touring, you're probably doing like those guys. He's probably doing dozens of shows a year. How do you always have like four rotisserie chickens worth of people with you at every yeah. show? <laughs> or maybe just four rotisserie chickens worth of stomachs in your own, and you're a hungry boy. How if if you were just starving, Eddie? How many rotisserie chickens could you eat? I don't even think I could finish one rotisserie chicken. I could finish one for sure. I couldn't do it. I I eat them pretty frequently, not like all in one. But I think if I was like really starving and maybe I was being paid money to see how far I could go. Yeah. I think I could eat I could probably eat two rotisserie chickens, but what? I feel disgusting. They're not super big when you get them at like Ralph's or something. Yeah. You know, they're about like like that. Now I wonder if I could eat two rotisserie chickens. We got one chicken. in the fridge if you want to see the size. <laughs> Here, we'll make a goal in the future if we do some crazy dumb milestone. If we have half, Oh no, I really don't want to eat two. If we have half a million subscribers by my birthday on June twentieth, I will try to eat as much rotisserie chicken as I can during a podcast. I will do that with you. <laughs> okay, June twentieth, half a million subscribers. Happy birthday to Gus! I will eat. I will try to down two full rotisserie chickens, and Eddie will too. Okay, I'll do that. That's a deal. Because we're not gonna hit that. So They're shaking good. it. <laughs> that's anyway. that's the new T series thing, but for us is like <laughs> <laughs> everyone's battling to get us to eat rotisserie chickens before June. I want to see a lo- live uh, subscriber count of like Gus and Eddie podcast, and then like Golden Plump or something. <laughs> Does, go- does this say Golden Plump or is this Golden Corral? Or what it is says it? Golden Plump. Golden Plump. Do you think Golden Plump, the chicken place, has a YouTube channel? I I don't even know what Golden Plump is. So it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's like a big chicken distributor, like a Tyson okay. Meats or something like that. Okay. Golden Plump official channel. Do they make commercials? We'll see. Golden Plump Chicken, 80 subscribers. Whoa. Go- Golden Plump, good chicken is our mission. Should we listen to a commercial? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Oh. Makes golden plump chicken so good. I don't know. No added hormones. Whoa. Whoa. Vegetable and grain fed. I eat those okay. too. Yeah. No antibiotics ever. Anti-vax, okay. All natural. Family farm raised. Look <laughs> at that. The guys are jiving. <laughs> They're just listing a bunch <laughs> of things. Good chicken is our mission. Can you guys do me a favor? Um, can you go flood their comments and just ask them how many rotisserie chickens they think we can eat? <laughs> 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 they got 80 subs. I just want like 100 comments like, hey, how many rotisserie chickens do you think that Gus and Eddie could eat in one sitting? <laughs> but do it on one video and don't bother them, but just do it to one video. Do it to the most recent upload. Okay, so let me What's check the out. the most recent upload? The most recent upload is the one we just watched. It's called Golden Plump Good Chicken is Our Mission. Okay? Okay. Six likes, zero dislikes. Let's not get Pop any dislikes. Pop a seven on there. Pop a seven. I just popped a seven. No dislikes. No dislikes. We're not doing anything negative. We're just asking Golden Plump how many rotisserie chickens they think that the two of us could eat in one sitting. And don't tell them who we are. Just ask how many Gus and Eddie could eat. 
They'll know. They'll know. They'll know. They're golden plump. I got the hat on. They'll fucking. They'll figure it out. <laughs> We're doing a lot of projects this episode. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things to do. I'm going to need to put a remind me out there uh, for our calendar. We just set a lot of chicken-related goals for this year. I will forget all of them after I leave this table. <laughs> <laughs> Please help keep me honest, all right? Uh, at meter... Oh, wait. Why don't we take a break and open some freaking... Mail! Mail. <clears throat> all right. Mail. Guys, we have too many packages right now, okay? So if you want to just hold off for a few more episodes at least, we, we need to just kind of binging with Babish these away, all right? I don't have my knife or my keys on me. Can you cut this real quick so I could just open it? Here we come. Okay, I don't like that at all. <laughs> all right, this is a really hot package. Yeah, it looks like the podcast set. I yeah. think there's more tape. I don't figure it out. All right, so I'm opening one from Brent S., and it is marked as extremely urgent. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Yeah, I, didn't br- I can't find any knives right now. Guess we're no, running. No, no, no. <laughs> Can I just say one thing? It's just fair. Guys, we're running out of knives. Please send them in quick. Oh, Eddie, fuck <laughs> don't listen to me. Oh, what kind of package is this? Extremely urgent from Brett S. Uh, is there, I hope there's not food in there. There probably is. All right, I see a lot of paper and a little plastic action figure. Here is a 3D printed tooth man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. All right, what do we got in here? It was fucking Unabomber manifesto. I don't know what this is, and it scares me a little. What's that? I don't know. Oh, I know this one. It's a cool puzzle. Check it out. It all unfolds. See? Ta-da. What I, what I like about the mail time is that a lot of it is like people send us what's behind a Dave & Buster's arcade. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Gus. G for Gus. See, this is just like a little brain teaser puzzle you can play around with. We got some coupons to Sonic. Whoa. I don't know if I've ever eaten there. Actually, I ate there one time. Idubs took me there, and I had a shake at 2 in the morning. Dude, we got so many Wendy's coupons and gift cards. Wow. Whoa, dude. <laughs> Check this out. Oh, whoa! These, oh, we're dude. gonna get so many Junior Frosties this year, dude. They, holy shit. They expire, dude, they expire in December of this year. We can, oh. We have so many Frosties, dude. Look at this. Oh. Excuse me, do these stack? Do they stack? Okay, one free Junior Frosty per transaction, per visit, per key tag within, wait, wait, wait. One, okay. We just gotta change our key tags every time we go to Wendy's. But can we stack them all? Oh, wait. No, you just get one every time. What if you I don't just need to show up with all these? What if I just do my normal order, but I split each item into its own order? So then there's one key tag per item. I don't know. You're gonna have to ask Wendy. Wendy, here, just just so audio listeners can hear too. Just this is only some of the the free tags that we got. So there you go. Did that sound good? I think so. All right. So uh, Brent, James, and Chase said, Dear Eddie and Gus, we love you, the pods, the vids, all your goofy gaffes and guffaws. Every Monday we stand outside on our college campus and ask questions for people walking by to answer. Gus, you might remember us from your Huntsville, Alabama show where we asked you to choose between Spy Kids and Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Of course I chose fucking Spy Kids. Uh, the poll that we sent you is a copy of one week's debate that I was inspired from your You versus 104th graders episode of the podcast. Please could take good care of the messenger. He loves you. All right. Hey, also, real quick, just from this last one, it was, it's from Captain Avatar again, same dude that gave us the Wendy shit before. <laughs> really? And yeah, he said uh, one thing too. He said he wanted to add that the, the Christmas PlayStation sweater was it was a birthday gift for me. Oh. I I must I read the note wrong. He said I wasn't sure if it fit, but I hope he liked it. I love that PlayStation sweater. I, I it's in the, somebody's closet right now, and I need to dig it out. But um, uh, no, I actually love it because we it's like a great holiday sweater. Mm-hmm. Um, so thank you, Captain Avatar, for all the free Frosties and all this shit. It's so nice of you. Thank you. Love you. All right. So this is supposed to be a poll. How many third graders can you beat in a fight? How Whoa. the fuck do you? Oh, they must have asked a bunch of people. Whoa. And these are all the responses. <laughs> Huh. At their Instagram is at Greenway Debates. Who right. fucked up the numbers that made them mean five thousand four hundred? Or no, fifty four thousand. <laughs> I don't know. Did somebody say like a million or something? Or there's uh, a couple infinities there that I see. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, that, I'm glad I didn't have to do that math. Good job, boys, doing the <laughs> Lord's work. Thank you. We would have been 
here for hours trying to figure out the mean. <laughs> also, it got way darker in here. <laughs> yeah, guys, this is Gus and Eddie after dark. We filmed with the passing of the daylight here, all right? Uh, I'm opening a package from Alexis M. from Tulsa. Here we go. Show me the money. I watched 21 again last week, that Blackjack movie. Uh -huh. So I, I got the, the gambling fiend spirit going through my veins right now. I forgot. I was going to say you said that last week, but you told me while we sat here two days ago and That's not on right. the podcast. Dear Gub Jansen and Eggy Burns Bursnack, I'm a big fan of the podcast as well as your individual channels. I hope you like the cross stitch I made for you guys. Frick capitalism anyway. Boy support boys. Love Alexis. Whoa. This is also wrapped. It's from Harry. Ooh. And it's a down under box. Damn. Dude, check this shit out though from Alexis real quick. I can already tell this is going to be dope. This is going on the wall. Oh. Oh. Cross stitch. Boy support boys. Look at that. Whoa. Pew. That fucking rules. That's some pretty stuff. We got a lot of cool cross stitch stuff. Say it was Alexis. This is Alexis. Thank you. Love you. You're my favorite. Is this the last package? That is. There's definitely a smell to this box. It's probably me. Why don't you give it a whiff? I will tell you, first word that comes to mind when I smell it. Male socks. Male socks. Like mail room and gym socks. Okay. Fill the time. Fill the time. All right, guys. We're opening our Australian meat socks right now. Packed and sent from Sydney, Australia. These are probably from the Fairbairn boys. It says, uh, uh, inside is a special collection of Aussie treats picked just for you. Whoa, it's, it's probably... It's Harry. Don't disrespect him. <laughs> Sorry. I bet it's just Vegemite. Whoa. You want to read a special note for you? Yep. Damn, got this some is... twisty cheese... Your twisties cheese? <laughs> um... Some good shit for some top cunts. Hope you boys... Th that's his word. We can say that. That's in their language. Hope you boys enjoy these Aussie snacks and make good use of that chicken salt. Uh, goes best on what you call fries. A little kangaroo. A little kangaroo. There's the flag. Look at that. Look at this good dude, boy in here. Dude, there's Tim Tam in here. Tim Tam? What's that? Boom. Oh, dude. Oh, I had these before. These are great. Yeah. They fucking rule. Here's some, uh, ch some chicken salt. <laughs> Uh, dude, there's just a bunch of good shit in here. Dude. Thank you, dude. Thank you, mate. Good day Whoa. to you. Whoa, dude. I'm learning already. It's like you're from there. Con, con, can I, I can't say that. Con, con, I can't say that. But you did. So. It, it was in the note. I didn't want to say it. I don't say it in regular life. But you just said it not reading the note. He you made me do it. Loud. It's... Fuck, I Harry, didn't why did you it. make him do it? Come on, man. Anyway, that's it for Mail! Mail! All right, here's what we got. At Meter Zeal says, what's a certain smell that takes you back to your childhood? Hmm. Human shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, okay. Human shit, did you say? Yeah, I was kidding. <laughs> I have seen more human shit in the last month than I've ever seen in my whole life. Yeah, there's a lot of human shit around on the sidewalk around here. I don't know what's going on. And it seems like, like you know, you see shit from time to time out here, but yeah. I feel like I am seeing new batches of shit <laughs> every day. They are figuring out and inventing new types of shit to put on the sidewalk. <laughs> That's like we thought Google Glass was going to replace the <laughs> smartphone. It's human shit. <laughs> Google poop. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Google ass. How's about that, huh? Uh, I thought poop sounded funnier. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yours uh, is more clever, but I think mine sounded silly. So. That's okay. Dude, my favorite childhood smell, I got two of them. I got freshly cut grass, you know? Mm -hmm. That uh, always brings it back. That's what Hermione's love potions smell like, by the way. I don't know if Really? remembered that trivia oh man how romantic fucking grass <laughs> yeah she likes a rugged that's probably why she liked victor crumb like one of those rugged outdoorsman guys yeah and Boom. then she settled for movie ron which is way worse <laughs> than book ron yeah that's true movie ron's a fucking idiot yeah why did i like rupert grint but man they fucked him dude yeah he is very wimpy and pathetic in the movies they... especially the second movie dude mm. like he's like i won't look at my <laughs> It's just two straight hours of him going, Hey, Hermione, oh, that's going to kill me. I'm going to be buffing slugs. The Ford Anglia's in the, st in the trees again. I what? know how to play chess. I got a rat. <laughs> <laughs> I got a rat. Why did he, I never got why he was so attached to the rat. Is it just because he's afraid his... Percy was going to kill him or something. <laughs> kill Ron. Like, Ron was scared his brother <laughs> yeah. was going to kill him. Because I think it was like Percy's rat, and, and they're like, oh, Percy's going to kill me, if Luke Scabbers. If he, oh, because it's a family pet. Yeah. But why did he take it to school? 
Also, you don't go to school and just like take your dog. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine? <laughs> First day of fifth grade. Hey, sorry, mom. I'm just taking the fucking just beagle. Walk in with like a giant ass like <laughs> like dog. You just sit down. Because the rat doesn't even do anything in Harry Potter world. Like a cat is a, just a regular pet, and an owl is a utility. Why do you need a fucking rat or a toad? You know? Yeah. Because yeah, they're, they're so useless. Yeah, that's and, stupid. And, uh, they just like hold the, the toads and sing, and that was always weird as fuck to me too. Where it's like, why? Did, <laughs> who came up with the idea? Was it like one kid is like attached at the hip to his toad, and they were like, we gotta go out there with all of our toads because we're gonna. Ma- he's gonna be really embarrassed if he's singing <laughs> and he what, can't sing without it. <laughs> what do you mean all of our toads? It's not. We don't all just have toads. I, you see, I bought some. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys, let's take all of our toads. Let's bring the toads in, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Zach, you gotta leave your toad out. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? Oh, dude. Anyway, besides that, I like the smell of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, here's a legit thing. I like the smell of really musty basements. Mm, I just I love it. Agreed. I just, that damp, earthy, shitty, like they got the laundry in the corner. Mm, I love yeah. that stuff. Mildew. That, mm. I used to be so terrified of my basement when I was younger, but that's where we would keep all the toys. Mm-hmm. But it was, uh, like not finished and just like gray cement and, and dark. And there were spider webs, but all the toys were down there. So it's like you turn a little light on and then I just be like, okay, yeah. where are the power rangers? <laughs> Did you have an attic in your house? Um, sort of. Yeah. It's like, um, it was more of like a storage space attic though. It's one where if you know, you got to walk on the actual support beams or else you'll fall right through. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so that's, I got good at that. <laughs> Not falling through. No, I like, yeah, actually at like walking on the beams without, uh, like having to like grab onto shit and everything. Damn. That's chill. That's, that's the way my, my grandma's attic is, is lined out like that. And, uh, she's got this, it's really cool setup where the upstairs, the stairs that go to the main level, uh, right at the top of the stairs, in jumping distance, there's this little cupboard door, and you open it, and that's the attic in oh, front cool. of you. Oh, cool! So you have to like pull a ladder out and set it on the steps and mm. crawl up into the end of the attic. I remember one of the coolest days ever when I was a kid. I used to go through. Uh, my dad and my uncles all had Mad magazines growing up. They just loved reading Mad magazines, and uh, as a result, I was just hooked on him as a kid Mm. and I read pretty much every issue of Mad Magazine from like mid 70s until like the late 80s at least I don't even know when Mad started I think it was in the 50s and I just loved him loved him and I I was going cover to cover I read them all and I got to the point where I was like I'm out of Mad Magazines and one day during the summer my grandma's like yo you want to run up to the attic and like help me get some old stupid lamp down or something her words and I run up there and I'm pushing through shit and I found an entire milk crate full of brand new New Mad magazines. There you go. Never read before, baby. There you go. I still, you know what? I'm gonna call my shot a little bit right now. I I intend to do a short documentary on YouTube, probably sometime in the next year, about Mad Magazine because they announced a few months ago that they're finally gonna close their doors, and that sucks. So I want to do a video about that, maybe. Fuck yeah, dude. <clears throat> but we'll see. Uh, what do we got here? At Bergen Tunnel says, "Is it okay to eat in class?" I say it's okay if you eat in the back of a large class, but my girlfriend says it's okay whenever. In college? Yeah. She's talking about, um, it depends. I think, I mean, it's okay kind of no matter what. Like, yeah. They kind of allow it usually. If we're talking about me being just like kind of a dick and criticizing everything socially in public, uh-huh. I think that you can eat snacks in class and you can eat like cold sandwiches. Or not like cold, but not warm. Yeah. But the second you're breaking out hot food with a clear scent... What are you doing, guy? If it's in a Tupperware, no. Don't bring it. Nope, absolutely not. Yeah, snack like chips if you got some fruit, that's fine. But if you're the son of a bitch that's bringing like a tuna casserole or something like that to class, don't fucking do that. Yeah. But also fuck the teachers and professors that would crack down on that stuff. Like, you got to eat, man. Especially at the college level. There just gets to the point where like if you're still a professor that... And obviously within reason, if you're in a science class, don't bring that shit in. But like if you're a professor that's in like a speech or an English class and there's a kid eating like some pretzels at the back and you're cracking down on them or you do the kind of shit where it's like, Oh, you didn't bring a pencil. I'm going to penalize you. It's like, yeah, prep me for the real world. That doesn't happen, dude. That's what I, I never understood about college is that when you're in high school, um, your, your teachers, like they more, more than anything kind of have to just 
be responsible for what the community wants for for like to a degree you know yep like if if they say some they can't like make their own rules they have to follow a certain set of rules but that's when you're going and like you're not really like obviously through taxes but you're not paying for your school yeah. and they have no not a lot of freedom as teachers and then the second you're almost directly paying your teachers in college they're like hey my rules we do whatever the <laughs> fuck i want and it's like how I'm not like paying your bills. Obviously, colleges don't need it, but it's like I'm paying a ton of money to come here for you to say, fuck you, I do what I want. You're like, you're my bitch. Yeah. It's like, what? How I, does that work? I don't get that. I always hate when teachers make up their own stupid rules. Yep. I think I told you I had a fucking English teacher in college that wouldn't let you use the word, uh, th- fuck, which one was it? It's, t- it's they. She wouldn't let you use the word they. What? Yeah. And it was like, you have to refer to the individuals uh, or, and you couldn't do, uh, you couldn't use the words like those too. Cause they're like, what, what are you referring to when you say those? Like if you establish a subject in the sentence, you can't like, she had a couple of these words that you literally, if you use Fuck them, off. she would dock you. Oh my God. I and, hate that. And she was one of those ladies. Oh, she just looked the part too. You know, she's probably like 60. She's got the, the curt short brown hair and she's got the big smile. And it's always like you, you know what? If you're creative and smart enough, you can think of a way to get around it. It's like, fuck you. Dude. You're making hurdles for me. Yeah. I had a speech professor kind of exactly like that, like that kind of person. And then they are always like kind of really mean when it comes down to it. And it's yeah. like, you know, it's that we're positive. We're here just to have like uh, not a good time, but to learn. And I love learning. But then something like really mean happens like i remember if you she would this didn't make sense at all if we had a speech we will like we did four speeches of the entire semester Mm -hmm. and um we would start one and it would be like here is the she would give us the syllabus like two weeks before that that next speech and she would say here's your syllabus now you have to give this to me right before you do your speech and that's what i'm going to grade this on yeah and you can't lose this (laughs) and what i would suggest is just hold on to it then because we didn't write on the syllabus or do anything with it. She's like, here's this blank piece of paper. Now don't lose it or I will publicly be mean to you in front of the entire class for losing it before the speech in two weeks. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, keep the paper on you then. Uh, What what the fuck kind of power trip is that? There's so much power trip shit that goes up in college and it's like, I think a lot of teachers feel like they like professors, especially like they feel like they need to just choose a lane and have a thing. You know, I, mm. again, I hate the people like I don't give A's in my class. It's like, I, okay, yeah. fuck you to death then yeah, because dude. you're going to wreck my GPA. Yeah. Like I can't imagine how frustrating it'd be. I was not a star student. You guys know that. Mm. But if I was one of those kids that was working my ass off and putting in the hours just to have some stupid turtleneck wearing and tea sip and teacher go, hey, so I don't give up A's in my class. Yeah. So just don't even try. It's okay. Fuck you then. I, I never that type of professor of the like bragging about certain people failing or good grades Mm -hmm. just from what i saw didn't exist in community college i think because it's like we all understand why we're here you know but then yeah i think there is something for like any school where you're going away to it whether it's like public or private where it's this kind of like well this is how i do things and if you can't catch up then I guess you you suck. And it's like, your job is to teach. Yeah. That's why I like, uh, there's so many good teachers that you can just, when you get a good teacher, it's so refreshing, dude. Yeah. Where you're like, I, I remember I had a, a, a sociology professor in college that was just like, hey, I'm not keeping attendance. She's like, you're adults. You can choose when you want to be here or not. You can catch up on the material when you need to. Uh-huh. She's like, it's up to you to whether you get, a, she's like, I'm giving you the material. I'm giving you the teaching. If you feel like that you don't need it that much and want to come in for tests, do that. I, she's like, it's up to you. I would like you to be here. But if you have something, I'm not going to add, you don't have to email me and tell me why. Mm-hmm. She's like, cool. So we're all adults here and you understand what's happening. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I, I encountered that so much, especially like that last semester of college again, where I was traveling every single weekend. I just, I was burning the wick at both ends and I was just, just trying to ration my like time off, you know, yeah. go try to buy time. Sometimes I had to like lie to professors. Like I got to go for this really important kind of thing, you know, but it's like, I had certain classes where if I missed more than two classes in an entire semester, I would lose like a portion of my full letter grade. Yeah. No, no, no. I had a class where if you missed three classes, every miss after that was a full letter grade dock Mm -hmm. down. It's like, what the fuck is going on here? This doesn't exist in the real world. It's so stupid. Like, what are you supposed to do? I'm just, you want me to demonstrate that I know the material, okay? Yeah. And I love that format that you laid out. It's like, if you listen, sometimes you got to miss shit. Just, I want you to know that you know this stuff. Yeah. 
And That's fucking ridiculous. I had one. Um, I remember. I don't, I can't say share any details about it. Do you remember? There's a specific professor that I had in community college. It was after we were already friends. That like, the dude was so strict. Yeah. That like, Tony and I skipped one class one day, and we came to class the next day. And he called us out into the hallway to talk to us about our attendance and attending class in the future. And then Tony and I, in like just to spite that, ended up skipping his class more than any other that I, we ever did in college. Because that was a full thing for me where I was like, I pay to go to school and this guy just talked to me like I was a toddler. Like, fuck him. Yeah. You know? I hate that shit. You know what's another commonality that, in my experience, again, it might be different for other people, but I've heard this a lot from other people at different colleges, is something, like when I was in high school, you do a test, you you do an assignment, you're going to see that grade in like a week. We had power school. In college, most of the time, teachers are not fucking putting grades in within the month. Yeah. It's like I would I would have times where I'd go through an entire class and I would have like two grades in there from like the first week. And... You shouldn't have to, like, book office hours to physically go in person and say, hey, so again, my full name is Gus because you don't know me because I'm just a statistic to you. Have I failed this class? Yeah. It's a joke. It's ridiculous. Most teachers were bad at that in, in my experience in college. You remember, uh, I, I told this on our old podcast. I probably told it on the new one, too. I had um, uh, also a professor in, in community college that, like, do you remember it was actually we were fully already friends at that point where he had just like lost most of my grade stuff i went to i was supposed to have an a in the class we we finished the semester and i looked right before christmas at my grade and it was an f and i was like what the hell's going on i emailed him and i was like what happened and he goes like he emails me back and he's like oh you didn't uh turn in anything pretty much all year and I did. And I had to be like, what are you talking about? I have emails records sending you this stuff. I've handed you physical papers before. And it's because I don't. I think he got. He tried to fuck me over because if he was playing a movie I had already seen, we had one Friday class. He would teach a little lesson and then we'd watch the movie and the class was three hours long. If I had seen the movie, I would leave. Yeah. Because he the movie would end and he'd go, okay, see you next time. And so it's like, it's a Friday. I've seen Cloud Atlas. I already know that I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, uh, so yeah, I don't know. That was ridiculous too, to have somebody just be like, just make up shit and just be like, yeah, you just you you just weren't here and you didn't do anything. Yeah. It's like, what are you talking about, man? I think the thing is, uh, it's comforting to know that most people for their whole lives still never really feel like I know exactly what I'm doing. Like people are teachers especially they're humans you know people are gonna bullshit stuff try to just go i don't know sometimes but it's frustrating when it's a professor in a position of determining like this is my future and you kind of just fudge this one yeah well that was the big thing on the line for me is that i don't know if you remember when i thought i was maybe gonna go to film school which thank god because i would never have been able to afford it and i would have gotten into massive debt but there was a program for it where it was uh uh uh, Columbia, Chicago, the um, film school, yep. where if you got a certain uh, GPA score, you could get like a huge scholarship that made it way cheaper. So then this guy is like giving me an F out of nowhere. And it's like, dude, I know, you know you're, you're like you said, a person that could make mistakes. This could potentially cost me like 20 grand, yeah. you know, in my future. So it's like, let's not fuck around here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We've bitched about college before, but it's again, the, it, when we do this stuff, I want to stress, it's not like we're anti-teacher or anything. Mm-hmm. It's just like we're saying the frustrations. There's been many teachers in my life that have made me into the person that I am now. Yeah, it's like both my parents were teachers. I, I love and respect the shit out of them, and they're clearly uh, taken advantage of in so many ways across the board financially and like rights-wise and stuff in this country, and it's just a bummer. Yeah. Uh, but also, it's just it, you, you see more individual bad example situations at the collegiate level, at least in my experience, where a lot of the times kind of just bad behavior goes unchecked among your yeah, peers. And that's it's really frustrating. It. Mm. Anyway, at Born Freaky says, my friend... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at Born Freaky, my friend thinks it's okay to open food at the grocery store and eat it while you're shopping. Fuck off. <laughs> if you have every intention of paying. Her fiance and I think it's dangerously close to theft. What do you think? I say fuck off, but I think it comes from, I'm a little bit jealous of the confidence of that person. Because also, I would never do that, and I don't think you should do that. Yeah. 
but just the like, I'm just going to fucking eat Fritos while I'm shopping. It's like, I could never be that guy. Yeah. I never will be that guy, Gus. I can't. <laughs> okay, I, I believe you. I don't, I want to be though. <laughs> don't, I won't let you. Okay. Um, Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I used to go do work in the in the woods with my uncle, kind of the the pushy one that I parody in Working Man. And uh, every time we'd go, he'd he'd come pick me up from my house. I was a kid, and we'd always go to the gas station, and he would go buy a full bottle of Gatorade and down the whole thing while he's walking to the counter, and not even like, like he finished like the Gatorade? finish a full Gatorade. That's impressive. And sometimes he'd like he'd walk up there and just be like. Whoa, way too much. And I'm just like, dog, <laughs> yeah. dick move. I'm just, I can't think of any situation where this is a good idea to do. Like, yeah. if it's a long line and you're dying of thirst or something, open your water bottle maybe, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. But the people that are just like, yeah, I'm going to open some Funyuns, they are always doing it for attention. Yeah. Unless yeah. it's an absent-minded thing. But it's like, why the fuck would you need to do that? Yeah, and if you're doing it in front of friends, it's like... what. Okay, I'm, I've been eating Funyuns for 30 minutes. When are they going to ask me about the fact that I'm doing this? Yeah, it's crazy. I do this all the time anyway. Uh, at I Like Movies 01 said... Can I mention something really quick? What? There is only two exceptions in all of society where you can eat food bef while you're paying for it. What is and it? And that is a 7-Eleven uh, Slurpee yep. and uh, popcorn from the movie theater. That's a good point. You can if you are waiting... Grab a little piece of popcorn, or you can sip on your Slurpee as you're headed toward the counter. Those are okay. Well, because those are open-faced things. Yeah, that's true. Fuck. That's the point. I would even go so far to say, you know, if what if you build a hot dog and you want a jalapeno off of it? But if it's like a fucking bag of chips, yeah, don't do that. If you're opening it, don't you, do it. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna change the also the oxygen level in the room. The pH. It's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> At I like movies. Oh one says, what are the best kind of rulers? Okay. Um, the bendy ones. Yep, dude. I dude, like the bendy ones. You could always just, I, I could just not listen in class for hours and just bend those bad boys. Ooh, we, we had some Smokey the Bear rulers, though. Where if, if you go like this, you rub on them. You start a forest fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're flint on them. <laughs> they turn color. They change colors. That's, and, cool. that's uh, cool. I didn't, um, actually my least favorite were the, the, the thin plastic see-through ones that would be like a color because mm -hmm. they'd snap so easily. And some shithead kid would I, – I, let me just say, if you were ever a kid in elementary school that was stealing things out of other kids' desks, who did you grow up to be? No. <laughs> <laughs> who are you now? Please uh, get re-involved in my life. I want to touch base with you. <laughs> I want to know if you're still an awful person <laughs> or – listen, I know you wanted that, that tech deck, but you shouldn't have gone for it. Shouldn't have done it, guy. Come on. Come on. Listen, I got a banger one here for you, Eddie. What's up? At Kyle Jahu says, please solve the I could slash couldn't care less debate. Each and every one of us has skin in the game. We need a decision once and for all. Do you know the phrase? No, wait, what are you talking about? So, for example, if you were asking me about something. Oh, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for the people at home, if you're asking, hey, Gus, do you care about something? And if I didn't care about it. You couldn't care less. I think it is. I couldn't care less. Yeah, that's what it is. Because you, could, you couldn't possibly care less than you already do. Yes. And I see so many people just say, oh, I could care less. And I'm just like... So yeah. you're telling me you haven't not cared to your full <laughs> potential yet. Here's the thing. I think most people say it just saying it. You know what I mean? Like, it's like just... There's a lot of phrases I say that I'm like, oh, I'll say it. And I'll be like, wait, that's not the correct phrase. I'm just saying it. Yeah. But I don't think there... Is there a debate over it? Because it, I could care less means that you care more than your least possible amount of caring. Yeah, that's what it should be. That, yeah. that would be positive. Like, I could care less, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I Google it, uh, and it says, English teachers and grammarians. Uh, isn't that the race in Waterworld, the grammarian? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a deep cut. We're, <laughs> we're big fans of the Waterworld show at Universal. Not the movie. Never seen it. Never I seen it. We should see the movie if we've seen the, the show. I think, well, we've definitely spent enough time watching the Waterworld show that we could have watched the movie probably like five times. Oh, there is a Waterworld video game. Wait, there is? <laughs> I didn't even fucking ask you. I knew you were about to, though. <laughs> it's one on the NES. Wait a minute. What publishers design platforms? Microsoft Windows. Dude, we need Whoa, to play Waterworld if we, we do. do thing. 
Um, cool. What was the – oh, you were looking at the, <laughs> the – you were reading off oh, the yeah. debate. So English teachers and grammarians will say that could care less is wrong because it should mean the opposite of couldn't care less. Right. Yeah. Okay. So they agree. So that's right. It's it's couldn't care less. Right. But at the end of the day, I could care less. <laughs> but the thing is, yeah, if you say I could care less, I get it. You just, I mean, I'm not going to be like, you forgot the, unt, you know, like, yeah, you forgot the, unt. but if we're debating about it, uh, I, I could care less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Ah, but, you all right? Yeah. I have so much fun doing the podcast, dude. It's so fun. Yeah. You could have just kept going. You, uh, you gonna, are you going to snap that? Wouldn't dare. It's really making me nervous how you're bending that. Stop. I don't like that at all.